Hello my little friends. Welcome to the tutorial for the delicious donut mosaic. We have this completed project here just to give you an idea about how it will look when we are done painting today. We chose to do strawberry icing on this donut and she's looking really delicious. Today in the tutorial, I'm gonna do a vanilla icing just so you can get an idea about two different ways that you can make this project. All right, this is what you're gonna need on your table. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've covered your workspace. We wanna to try to avoid getting acrylic paint on our table. It's a little bit hard to remove, so if you haven't covered your workspace, go ahead and grab a placemat from your kit and just make sure that your workspace is protected. We also would recommend wearing art clothes or a smock for this project as acrylic paint is difficult to remove from clothing. You are also going to need your blank delicious donut. You will need some water, just a bowl of water from your house. You are going to need a few paper towels. And for the first step of the project, which is the painting part, you're going to need one large brush and one small brush. You also will need a card for mixing paint, or you may have a paper plate in your kit. One of these two things is gonna be in there. And the paint colors. So for this project, we're gonna be using white. I have blue. I have this tan color, which is gonna be my donut color. And then I have a little pink for the cheeks. All right. So if you need to pause for a sec to set up your table, you can pause, rewind, or fast forward this video at any time. If you need to rewatch something, or if we're going too slow for you and you wanna speed up, those are all wonderful. Okay, we are gonna actually start out today by painting the background of our donut all white. Um, the reason we're gonna do this is that we are going to be filling in most of this area with white and putting a white underbase on here sometimes helps your colors come out a little more bold. We don't always need to do this, but it is a good first step for this project. So you can go ahead and grab your white paint. You don't need to pour it onto your mixing plate at this time. You can leave it right inside of the cup that it came in. And you're gonna grab your large brush and you can start out by painting the whole background of your donut white. I also wanted to add, it's always a good idea to try to spread your paint out nice and thin. There's a couple reasons for this. The first one is your color is gonna look more consistent and the second one is, it's gonna help your color to dry more quickly so we can move on to the next step. Don't worry if you're painting over the, the black lines that are on this project. I'm gonna show you, they'll actually come right back out um, when we go back after we have the whole thing covered and we paint over them, they're gonna just pop right back out and appear again. It's one of the things I really love about this project. All right, so I'm spreading my paint out nice and thin. And I'm just working my way all around the donut. All right, go ahead and pause your video if you need a second to finish painting the background part of your donut white. And once you've completed that, go ahead and join us right back in. Okay, 
So we have our whole background painted white. I'm going to wash this brush out because we're going to take a break from using this brush for a sec. It's always important to make sure that you wash acrylic paint out of your brushes and um, that you don't let it dry in there. It is pretty difficult to get acrylic paint out of your brush once it's dry. So always make sure that you've done a good job washing and drying your brush and just setting it down flat to dry. If it's too difficult to wash your brush out in your bowl of water, you can always take this to the sink. Just make sure that you've asked um, someone in your house if it's okay to do that. Okay. If there are areas where you feel like you can't see your line design, you're gonna take this little dry brush and you're gonna just go right over those lines. And you're gonna watch, it's really cool. They're gonna kinda just pop right back out. You don't have to do this if you don't have a problem seeing your lines and you think that you could move forward onto the next step without doing this, you can go ahead and just skip it if you really want your lines to show. Um, this is a good time to take a little bit of the paint off there. I'm not as worried about the sprinkles, just because we're not gonna be painting those in, we're gonna be using mosaic tiles to decorate them. But I wanna make sure that I can see my eyes and my mouth and this edge of the donut where we're gonna paint the actual cake color. So every once in a while, if my brush gets a lot of paint on it, I'm just going over to my paper towel and wiping it off. But other than that, I'm sort of just tapping and moving this paint a little bit so that I can see the black lines underneath. All right, that looks pretty good to me. If you wanted to go back in here and tap out all of your sprinkles, you 100% can do that. I don't know that you really need to, like I said, since we're gonna be just putting tiles on them. We don't need to fill them in. It's not as crucial that you see those lines, but if that's more comfortable for you, by all means, jump in there, tap those sprinkles out a little bit. Okay, so even though we have a little white on this little brush right now, we're gonna go ahead and just use this to fill in our cake color. I don't mind if this cake color and white get mixed together a little bit. Um, so, if you want your cake to be a little bit of a lighter shade of, of brown, you can mix this together with white. I'm gonna use it just as it is. I like this color. I have my small brush, and I'm gonna start filling in the cake part of my donut. I'm gonna go very close to this line and do the best I can to stay within this line. If you make a mistake, it's not a problem. You have a lot of options. You can put a little water on your brush and just use your brush like a little sponge to just wipe off any mistakes that you make. So I'm gonna continue all the way around my donut until I have the entire cake part of my donut filled in. Okay, if you have any areas of your cake section where the paint is very thick, you're gonna just go back and take your brush and try to smooth it out. Again, we do this so that our paint dries faster and so the color is a little bit more consistent. All right. I am rinsing my small brush. We are gonna go back to that larger brush for a few minutes. Okay. 
We're gonna put another coat of white inside of the frosting section of our donut. Uh, and the reason we're gonna do that is because, as you can see, as your paint starts to dry, you can see the other color, the color of the base of the wood sort of start to come through there, and we want our donut to be nice and white. Once we have the white frosting on there, we are also gonna use a little bit of blue to sort of give it some depth and shading. And that's easier to do when this background color is wet. Um, so we're gonna go through the same step as we did before where we kind of paint this whole thing and then wipe out the eye section a little bit. So you can go back to your large brush and you can grab your white again and go ahead and put a second coat of paint on the frosting area of your donut. All right, while our background is still wet, I'm gonna grab your mixing card and I'm just scooping a little bit of white on here. I still have my big brush. I haven't washed it out. And I am also gonna grab just a dot of this blue and mix it into my white so I get a really light blue. I'm gonna wipe my brush off a little bit. I only want a little bit of blue on here and I'm gonna use it around the edge of the frosting where the frosting and the, the cake part are next to each other. If, it's, if you start doing it and it's too dark, you can always just add a little more white in there just to lighten it up. But this is gonna give our frosting a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension. Okay, so at, after you sort of go around and wiggle around this edge, I'm just going in and sort of blending it towards the middle so that the darkest section is close to the cake and the whitest section is close to the middle. So I'll show you again. So I'm wiggling, I need a little more blue. If it's too white and you can't see much of a contrast, like what just happened to me, you can just grab a little more blue. So I'm gonna wiggle around the edge, wiggle, and then I'm just lightly going in and blending. Wiggle around the edge, and then lightly go back and blend. This is definitely easier to do when your white is still wet. Um, if it's not blending for you, if you feel like it just looks like a blue stripe and you're having trouble getting the white and the blue to mix together, I would go back with your brush, kind of just wipe it off, get some of the blue off of there. And then you can grab white again and go back into those places where it didn't blend and just go over it with a little bit of white. To blend two colors together, you really need them to be wet. That's the key. So once it starts to dry, it's gonna be harder and harder to blend. So you may have to go back and forth a little bit with the darker color and with the white just until you get the effect that you want. And don't worry, if, if, if you've made it too dark, you can just add more white. And if you feel like there's not enough dark, you can add more blue. And if you don't like the way it looks at all and you prefer for your donut to just be solid white, that's totally great as well. So take a few minutes and play with this blending until you really like the color that you have and you like the way the shading looks. And then one more time, we're just gonna go back in here and clean out our black lines for our eyes and the cheeks and the mouth.
If you can still see your black lines, you can skip this step. Okay. We wanna give this a minute to dry. Um, and while it's drying, we can talk about what we're gonna be doing next. Um, we are going to, let me fix this little spot. I had a little white over here. Acrylic paint is really great because if you make a mistake, if you get out of the lines or something goes wrong, once it's dry, it's very easy to paint over it and fix it. So we really love acrylic for that reason. It's very forgiving. While I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna wash my brushes out since we talked about that. We don't wanna let it dry, all that paint dry in our brush. Um, okay, so in the next step, what we're gonna be doing is filling in the eyes and the cheeks and the mouth and also this. Um, we're gonna be outlining the edge here. Before we do that, we do wanna give our project a little bit of time to dry. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. You obviously can stand up and walk away for a few minutes and let, just let it air dry. You can use a blow dryer or a handheld fan. You can use a paper plate fan. You can use your hand. That doesn't work that good, but you can try. Um, but whatever you do, you do just wanna give this a couple of minutes to dry. So when we start to fill in these little details, um, it doesn't blend together with our background color. So we're gonna take a quick break, let it dry, and move on. Okay, we're back. We've given our project a few minutes to dry and we're ready to move on to the next step. In your bag, you're gonna find a Sharpie marker. We're gonna use the Sharpie marker to outline this edge part of our project. You could do this with um, a small brush and the black paint that's provided. It's totally up to you. Um, but a Sharpie marker is a little bit easier, so that's what we're gonna go with today. Oh, my project's not totally dry. Okay, this is a good time. Just check your project and see if it's completely dry. If you need a few more minutes, fine. Um, sometimes the Sharpie will not draw on top of the paint if it's not very dry. I think I'm just wet a little bit here in the middle, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my outline. So you're just gonna drag your Sharpie along this line where your donut meets your icing. So I do this little, I'm, I'm gonna call it a cheat, or, but you could call it a trick. Sometimes your marker stops. You can't, it's gonna be hard to make a line that goes solid all the way around this. When my marker stops, I usually pick it up and then I'll make a dot or I'll make two dots and then I'll start outlining again. And this is an easy way to get a nice, cute looking outline that you don't have to stress out about that much, that the line isn't totally solid. Sometimes I'll just stop and start again. I like the look of the little dots too. It's cute and it gives it a little bit of energy. All right, so I'm just following this line all the way around the edge. Take your time, okay? You don't wanna make a mistake and then you're not happy with the way it looks. I'm making this look fast, but you can go as slow as you need to. And of course, you can pause this video at any time if you need a few minutes. Okay, the outline of my project is good to go. Um, oops, sorry, one more thing we wanna outline. We wanna add his little smile in here. So with the same marker, uh, you're just gonna go ahead and give him a little scoop on his mouth. All right, he's looking cute. If you wanna outline his eyes, we're gonna, we are gonna fill them in with black paint, um, but if you feel like it's easier to give yourself a guideline by outlining his eyes, you can do that too. I'm actually gonna be putting a tile on this section, so it's not too, too crucial. Okay, we're gonna do his cheeks next. You're gonna need your mixing card again. Hopefully you have a tiny little clean spot over here. And we are gonna take a little scoop of white and a boop, tiny dot of pink. 
And we're gonna make a nice light pink for his cheeks. If you made the strawberry donut and not this vanilla donut, you can use a dark pink for this step. Otherwise, we're gonna use this nice light pink. Take your time, we're just filling in his cheek. I have that smaller brush, the smaller square brush to do this. You also have a really little brush in your kit. You have this guy that we're gonna use when we fill in his eyes. Um, if it's more comfortable for you to use this to do his cheeks, that's fine. All right. Again, don't worry if this goes near his eyes, it's gonna be black in there, so don't have to be too worried if it gets in that other section. Okay, rinsing out this pink from our brush. And the last painting step we have is to fill in the eyes. I'm gonna use this really small brush just because it's very delicate, these little edges. Um, this circle that's here, this is like a, a shine in his eye. You can go ahead and just paint right over that. Since we are going to be putting a tile in here, we don't really need to worry about that too, too much. So I've got my black and I have my very small brush and I'm going to begin filling in, ha <laughs> ha filling in his cute little eye here. Okay, so we have his cute little eyes filled in. He's looking good. I'm gonna rinse the black out of this detail brush. And we are actually gonna paint one more really quick detail on here before we start tiling. In your kit, in your tile section, you have these two black large tiles that we're gonna use as eyes. And what we want to do is add a bit of a shine to these so that when we put it onto our project, he looks really animated. So I have my white paint and my tiny detail brush. And I'm just going to add, let's see if you guys can see this, a little bit of a line on here. Okay. And then I'm also going to add a dot. I'm gonna try to go close up there so you can see. Okay, a line and a dot. And then you're gonna do this, you're gonna just put this to the side and do the same thing on the other eye. So we're putting a line and a dot. If this looks like it's too hard or you wanna skip this step, by all means. This is your art project and it can look however you like. And supposed to be fun so don't get stressed out okay at this point we are done with all of our paint um, so you can go ahead and pause the video for a sec and you're gonna want to clean up your workspace which means we're gonna put the caps back on all of our paint colors we're gonna make sure that all of the brushes that we use in today's project are well washed and laid flat to dry and we're gonna get rid of our water bowl once you've done that you can take out the supplies for the tiling part of the project. So you're gonna have containers that have tiles inside of them. You're going to need a container that has glue and you are going to need your popsicle stick. So everybody go ahead and take a second to do that now. Okay, my small friends, we are back with a nice clean workspace. 
and we are ready to move on to the tiling part of this project. Um, hopefully all of your paint is dry at this point. We just most recently painted the eyes and the cheeks. So just be careful if this section's not totally dry yet, you may wanna just turn your project um, so that as you're working, um, your hand isn't gonna touch this section that's not completely dry. I would recommend pouring your tile colors out onto the table um, or out onto a paper plate or into a bowl. And the reason is most of the colors that we're gonna send you, most of the tiles are smooth, but sometimes we do cut tiles down from larger tiles into smaller pieces. And when we do that, it's possible for the edge to be um, possibly a tiny bit sharp. So by pouring them out, it eliminates you having to dig inside of the cup. You're gonna have a lot of colors. We have all these different rainbow colors inside the cup. Today we're making a vanilla donut with rainbow sprinkles. If you used any other color inside of your icing, you're gonna have whatever flavored donut you picked with rainbow sprinkles, okay. You're also gonna have a cup that has all circles. You can go ahead and pour those out as well. I also just like to pour them out because then I have a good idea about what I have and it helps me to plan out my design. Couple things about the tiling. Number one, once you glue your tiles in place and they dry, they are difficult to remove. I'm telling you that because you may wanna lay some tiles out on here before you start gluing to make sure that you like the way it looks. Once you've glued your tiles in place, they are difficult to move. The second thing I am going to tell you is, as you're gluing, if the glue spreads, out beyond where you put the tile. So for example, if you glue a tile and glue squishes out around the edges, when this dries, it's gonna be totally clear. So you don't need to worry if you see any of the glue around your tiles. For this particular project, I didn't really worry whether my tile totally covered these black lines or not. I sort of like the way it looks when you can still see them. But if you don't wanna see them, you can try to plan it out so that you totally cover the black lines. You can also put more than one tile together to cover a section. So go ahead and experiment a little bit and see what feels best to you. And once you have your tiles laid out on here in a way that you like, you can glue them down. There's two ways to glue your tiles to your base. The first way is how I showed here, where I took my popsicle stick and my glue. You just need a little drop, a little dot. And I just put a dot down onto the base of the project. And then I took my tile and stuck it on. The other way is to take your popsicle stick and your glue and hmm, what color should I do? Take your tile and put the glue onto your tile and then stick your tile down. So either one is fine, whatever feels good to you. Um, just make sure that you are planning this out before you start gluing. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna just glue mine in, but you should definitely take the time to plan it out. All right, happy gluing.
Okay, so I have all of the spaces filled in that had a box to put tiles into. There's a lot of other space out there. So if you like, and you have extra tiles left on the side, you can go back in and fill in some of the spaces that are in between those initial tiles that you put in. So for example, anywhere that you have a big spot, even if there's not a sprinkle outline there, you can go back in and fill in with more tiles. If you like the way your project looks now and you don't wanna fill in these extra spaces, that's totally your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some of my extra spaces now so you can see what that looks like. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about the way my sprinkles look. You can go ahead and take any extra tiles that you have and put them to the side. Um, you may not have any extra tiles. I didn't exactly measure mine out before I put them in these little cups, but you will probably have just what you need to cover your donut. Once you have this section done, the last step of the project is to add in our donut eyes. So hopefully by this point, that little white stripe that we put on our eyes is dry. And put a little dot of glue on each eye. Oh, he looks cuter already. Okay, and then it's good to put this shine of his eye, that's what we made with this white, Kind of want that to be in the same place on both sides. So I put mine sort of on the top left. You can put yours anywhere. Oh my goodness, so cute. I hope you had the best time creating your delicious donut mosaic today. And we will see everybody soon. Bye bye.